During last week, uh, we talked about uh, the new new nowness. Life is emerging from the old past. So, then I want to ask you, what vestiges of the past uh, has uh, the new nowness taken to the present? The past and the future are all now in this present moment. Moment. So, what is it of the past that is contained in the new nowness life is? The basic idea, Charles, would be reference uh, again. Uh, we're in creation. Everything is a reference, and so uh, you know. And you know, as we gradually go through the process of whatever we do, it doesn't matter what we create. Creation's all the same. Uh, it just appears differently. And so, uh, with these appearances, what we're seeing is uh, different points of view that we can accomplish and recognize what the all is, you see? This is what really creation is, not ideas upon ideas, um, like we have with most of the systems here, which are controlling system, which is the job market, the beliefs in, in gods and uh, saviors and things like this, all these ideas upon ideas. Everything, once you wake up, is a reference. It's another view. It references something. You see? And so uh, there are things that relate to, like the physical body, the things that we eat, uh, and the nutrients and whatever, because everything in creation is basically the same, too. This, this is where it corresponds. The bodies correspond to what's here in nature. It only, it only makes sense that it does. But because of the creativeness, of taking what is, you might say, a natural process and creating something else. It's like, oh, let's try to figure something else out. And all of a sudden, okay, let's do, okay, we have this genetically modified food. We're, we're changing the structure and whatever. It still is a reference to the true reality, but it's really no longer a relation with what's naturally here. You see, that becomes the difference, and through that distortion, uh, things become such where people are aberrated and whatever, then they've got to handle and deal with that too. But again, uh, this is the best part, more so than a spiritual path idea, whatever. We started off with that, which I've said many times, and we will constantly redefine it uh, for everyone. Uh, it just gets better and more simple. And so, uh, yeah, uh, and also uh, the biggest part is is that once you recognize that, you also see what isn't real. You need that also, which I've said many times. So it all plays hand in hand, but again, it's up to each individual how they approach it. So, yes, we have a physical life, and we want things to be real. Well, they are. You can have whatever you want. It becomes your reality, however you see it. But for the most part, people don't realize that it's just creation. It's not the true reality life is, because that's awareness. That's the isness life is, and to recognize that. <clears throat> and again, it's a, it's a big step uh, to do that. To go through that process and so uh, this is where the new presentation will constantly be uh, upgraded you see we're not going to stick with the same old ideas it will be constantly upgraded uh, according to what is what is because this is see it's an endlessness that's what's so cool about it and you gain insight into this part so yeah what we've come through uh, the best, uh, the best idea of it is a reference, which it really is. It allows us to, this is where you see and free yourself. This is your real freedom, but it's invisible. It's not something to where, oh, okay, I can just go do whatever I want. That's not real freedom. That's your free will at work. There's a difference. So again, there's many points to define and understand, etc. So, to give another hint, I just wrote a group, it's called the First Steps, or First Steps, 
uh, I just wrote it, and it's uh, Kelsey probably made a website on it. So again, we'll we'll go over this, but yeah, that's that's the idea, Charles. Everything is a reference to the is and a reference to what it is not. Okay, then. Okay, I made an observation. It would appear that one cannot uh, fully understand the new noun as life is uh, without first being mental or working from the mental uh, level. So what do you say about this? No, it's very true. We work from, uh, we go, you might say, up and down or you better back and forth. And that is, is that, yes, we first uh, view what is presented, like the new presentation, uh, the writings, and the new sound to uh, experiment to discover how each person discovers the real side. So, yes, uh, this part is very important because we need this relationship with uh, our mind and our feelings and all these things because they do apply in creation and at the same time figuring them out how they apply to the true reality life is again this is where the individual this is the individual must decide it's not to where you just open your hands and it's all going to fall from the sky the old saying like mana from heaven or whatever okay these things really apply so above so below they apply in creation okay and first we got to learn about creation so we go through that mental process, of course. And then little by little, you might say you step beyond yourself to take a peek at what else there is because it's all invisible. The unknown is always invisible. There is something there, but you have to learn to see it. You know, just like animals see in the dark where people don't, they need special apparatus to see in the dark, but, you know, nocturnal animals, they don't need it, they can see. See, so it's that scene. So yes, the mental part is very important, except if you get stuck there. And so each lifetime, you might say, you only have so much time. Okay, And yes, you can get it on the other side. But guess what? When you go to the other side, when you pass on, are you going to remember? Or are you just going to be emotionally attached, etc.? So you've got a lot to deal with with yourself. You're always dealing with yourself. And so this is right now the prime time to really focus and study. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to be a doctor or whatever, this is the prime time. And that mental part is very important, but it's secondary to your real awareness. So you will go back and forth. And this is what I do myself. Uh, I have fun at this. And that is, is that what I like is, is that I don't have to do any research or anything to understand things. If I want to get into the details, that becomes different. Yes. But like starting my car, I don't I don't need to know how it runs because there's somebody else out there that does or I don't need the car or whatever. So this is how it is with your personal self and your mind and this mental apparatus and creating ideas and references. So as you study the five bodies, especially, especially that mental part, that literal part and the intuitive body to gain insight into recognizing your real awareness. So you go back and forth and then you do the best you can according to, you know, I do the best I can to reference the is according to the, uh, the symbols or the words that are available to me. You know, we only have a certain amount of words and whatever available to us. And besides, it wouldn't even matter uh, how many we have. It wouldn't explain it. So this is where I've got to kind of invent my own words as a closer reference to that reality. So, yes, the literal part is very important, but as we look at the world today, uh, the, the world controllers, the elites, the cabal, whatever, they have taken advantage of the love idea, a person's passions, uh, the sensual parts of them, the mental part. This is where the educational systems are very literalized, where they get people to become rule lovers and obey the system and then chase the monetary system for lifetimes into the future. You see, it is very important, but then at the same time, it can become perverted, distorted, and just uh, downright weird and strange till, can till the cancers from the astral body set in. So there's a lot going on here. So 
for these few moments, like we're all here, oh, everybody's basically fine. But guess what? You're in cause and effect. The effects are always going to show up unless you know how to deal with them, unless you have the awareness to do it. But that mental part is very important. But if it's, uh, you know, like the old saying, the mind is uh, a good servant but a bad master. And so the thing is, but most people just go off with their minds, which is understandable. We've been taught. But at a certain point, you can have the understanding and recognition more than a realization that you don't need to just follow the dictates of the mind and your personal desires and whatever because they're just going to lead you into more situations that you're going to keep chasing. And if that's what you want to do, you have the free will, but you will stay stuck here. So the mind's an interesting thing. Again, it's like your computer. It's really a storehouse. And for the most part, when people come into this, they look at at their mind and the experiences that they've had instead of looking into the real side for new experiences to relate. So if they have an experience, what we're presenting, they go, well, th this doesn't mean anything to me because they're looking at their own self. They're not testing, you know, the unknown to see what shows up that can show them something more. It's very interesting how it works. Go ahead. There is a... Uh there's a, there's a quotation I came across while uh, reading the, the Blue Sky Island where Oshalu says, he tells, uh, he tells you in, the blue, in Blue Sky Island that very few people will accept what you will present. There are so many who want to stay with their lost drama and think everything on on the earth will be fine. Now, Dwayne, in view of the thrust of uh, the wonderful world, world educators um, in their attempt to uh, reach the masses in one way or the other, would you say the, the wonderful world, world educators are doing too much or just enough uh, consonant with uh, Oshalu's uh, prediction is it like uh, we are let me say not conforming to the law of economy which governs everything where action and results balance each other never too much or too little what, what would you say? Well, first of all, uh, what uh, Ursula was referring to there was not a prediction. It was simply uh, letting me know that um, you don't have to, you might say in a way, uh, really go fast forward with all this and uh, etc. Because again, uh, it really is to where the reality of what we're doing is a presentation. And so now it's it's all over the world. It really is. It's, you know, uh, all the spies of the world, the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, they all have this information. It's all over. See, so it's not that we're going to them. It's now that we've presented it. It's they come to us and see we see who shows up. Now, this, this is where the boys come in, Rebizar and the guys. And they see it in a broader picture on the real side and this is what they do they bring the people in like you and others everybody here was touched by them and prepared to come here to this point to recognize something but that part is up to you okay this nothing's going to be recognized for you this is the old spiritual path idea where okay well whatever the master says and you know we follow his words and whatever it's not like that okay that's your you know, it, it can't be like that realistically with the whole of life. None of that can be like that. You have free will. You must decide uh, where to stand, how real you are, what your relationship is to everything. That's all up to you. That's not a given anymore. So, And the boys see that too. They, they're not doing the same thing they used to. But for those that do step up and they see that, uh, there are perks. But you have to do something to do that. And I'll give some more examples as we go along here. So, um, 
Yeah, exactly that, uh, Charles. Uh, you know, with uh, whatever the individual chooses. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I've not yet uh, really got to, uh, understood what you've said uh, with this view. Um, in view of the fact, uh, she says, uh, uh, very few people accept what you present. And then we are doing a wonderful worldwide wake-up call. So what, what do you think about this? Uh, are we uh, like doing too much or too little? Compared to all the planets, the galaxy, and 8 billion people on the planet, uh, Charles, it's a very simple comparison. We maybe have 20 people here, and you still got a whole lot out there uh, that are doing, thinking, uh, and, and whatever. So um, it's not that we're doing it, not doing enough or, or too much. That's not the idea. Um, the idea is we're just doing what we're doing. You know, again, uh, just like anybody, we're just doing what we're doing. So um, I don't look at ratings. I never did that, even with the website where people, uh, you know, have a little counter with the hits there. Um, how can you rate uh, the whole of life comparatively so? Uh, and basically, it's all done through, through the business world. That's a business world type of thing. How can you rate anything? Oh, we're doing good. We're not doing good. We just do what we can, and the boys are the same thing. You know, they've gone through this process like we were here, and they're they're doing the same thing. Uh, they're presenting what they can, and that's it. And what do they do? They do this 24-7. They don't stop. We sleep. We do other things, but we, we go on the real side. Um, last night, I was uh, with a gal in a room, and she was listening on some speakers uh, to some some music and so I adjusted uh, the sound uh, and I said can you hear that better and so uh, I was adjusting the sound for her so uh, again uh, being with someone like this and, and somebody else they, there has to be a willingness there for an adjustment to be made etc so yeah we're I don't see us doing enough because of what is happening in the world. We're in a physical world, and with all the demise, the demise is huge. It's bigger than uh, people can imagine. It's a tidal wave that, you know, you might say reaches the sun and the moon. It, it's bigger than that because it's all through creation unconsciously. Again, as people have their attention on the la-la land here, they are really not seeing what's taking place because the effect will always show up. And it's a big effect unconsciously, and this has been set into motion. Don't want to scare people here, but it's very, very real. Those who have the awareness will see through it. Those that don't, so I don't see us presenting enough uh, at all. But there's there's no scoreboard here for this. You know, and each person uh, earns their way. This is very important now. It's not about sitting at the master's feet and listening to the pretty words and thinking that, oh, we're all fine. Yeah, it never worked. The, a lot of that stuff. It really never worked. It was just gimmicks to get people, you know, wisdom is is like a gimmick uh, to get people to pay attention to something, to get them kind of ready for the next step. That's all it is. And so now we see that it's not about the words. It's about your intent and the reality to decide to recognize this becomes the difference. So, uh, and that's huge. Because this, the world is an attention getter. So I never see us doing enough, Charles. I'm always focused on doing something. But at the same time, I'm not going to be just writing 24 hours a day, you know, in the physical sense. Because it's really about the awareness and my attention. So it becomes very interesting. And so, again, uh, what's more important, your job? Yes, you have to do your job. But what is first? And, you know, the interesting thing is, is that as people, uh, you know, Here's Sandra and Bob going to go on this adventure, and you see the people in the corporation. 
No, for the most part, their personal life comes first, and the membership is second. Oh, they love the Eck and Harry and all this stuff. Well, that's wonderful. They will be emotionally attached to all those ideas, and that's their choice. But realistically, those that have very good jobs, they're going to be chasing their money into the future. Oh, dear, we can make more money, and we can retire, whatever. They're just chasing into the future. That's all they are. See, this is how the monetary system and everything's been set up. So, um, you know, we're reaching very little people, Charles, and even people that take a look at it. I don't assume anything. I see what people will do. Everybody has to prove themselves. That's it. Bottom line. Or you don't. It's a choice. And so just by the fact that even if everybody knows about what I've written, it doesn't mean they're going to do anything. Hey, everybody knows about Yale University and whatever, etc. Are are they all going there? Uh, you know, UCLA, etc. The finest colleges in the world, universities. Are they all going there? The world knows about all of them. Are they all going there? No, they're not. So they can say, "Gee, are we reaching the public or not? Or who's showing up?" You see. So it's the same with us. It's really an endlessness. Oh, it's it's really like keeps just going here, especially in creation. You know, we're also touching other planets and other dimensions, etc. It's just not in the physical sense. There's always a bigger picture. And so, uh, how many people in the world are wondering? Gee, are there aliens out there, or people living on other planets? See, again, you know, they they follow these ideas of wondering about something instead of exploring to find out and broaden their view. But for the most part, they want their nine-to-five job and chase the money. That's really what they do. This is how they've been geared to do, to be slaves of the world and the monetary system. And I'm not saying to be without it. That's not the idea. So it's this is where the adventure comes in, Charles, a real-life adventure, okay? So we're kind of like Robin Hoods, you know, taking from the... Uh, the rich and giving to the poor in other words kind of balancing things out but we're really, really not taking anything from anybody and so that's where the adventure part comes do you want to be part of the adventure or do you want to just stay dull and boring with your nine-to-five job yeah it's because you're just going to grow old that's it you're going to grow old and feeble and wish you would have yes charles so i never see us doing enough but that's my view and also, what Ursa said, that was quite a while ago. So every day is a new day. 